Once upon a time, on a warm, clear morning, a little girl was wandering through the forest. Her curiosity had led her away from her usual path and close to a tree where she made an amazing discovery. In the ground, buried beneath dead leaves, it lay. It was a white stuffed rabbit. She named him D. He was cozy and lonely. She decided to make him a best friend. Moved by a mysterious urge, she took him to the top of an ancient mountain to visit an old tree where a beautiful shiny raven lived. While standing there, looking up, but deeply drawn in her thoughts, she had the strangest idea. After attaching those fast wings, and the sharp beak to her new friend, she walked through the once enchanted forest that grew behind the mountain on her way to a special place she knew. With great curiosity, a nervous squirrel and a peculiar and quite ferocious hooded wolf head observed them as they passed by. Over the tallest grey hollow tree she placed him, hoping that he would fly. Fly, rabbit, fly! You're almost a bird now, she thought. And as patiently as she could, she waited. Fly, Dee, fly! She thought to herself. But he wouldn't. She felt sad and soon lost hope for him. So she decided to do what little girls like her do when they feel sad and hopeless. She ran and hopped over the hill between wildflowers by a green lagoon chasing butterflies letting her mind fly away from there into her thoughts and little games. Hidden, the wolf head watched. When she finally gave an end to her games and her mind returned from the land of dreams she was in, she remembered D. She picked him up and decided to resume their adventures away from that hill into more distant places with new hopes for him. They entered the cold, dark and foggy woods that grew in the lowlands. There lived an old fat toad barely standing over a lotus leaf in the middle of a pond. He saw them coming and stood still, 
not knowing what to do. The girl lifted her eyes from the muddy ground and saw him. The toad was petrified, astonished by what he was witnessing. The girl knelt in front of him and waited in silence. The toad became increasingly nervous by that look. So, he thought a friendly croak would help. But it didn't. Suddenly her lips opened and a couple of dreamy, indecipherable words came out, which surprised and frightened the elusive squirrel and petrified the toad, who was violently taken out of his pond and stretched out with such energy that his arms were ripped off his body. Behind a tree, the wolf had watched. She sat on a rock by a deep, whirly river to calmly stitch those legs into Dee's body. At the sound of a mysterious melody she was mumbling. Now you'll be able to jump higher than any other rabbit. The girl thought to herself. But then, something caught her attention. In the sky, a majestic white bird flew with singular grace. If Dee had those wings, he would have that lovely fly, she thought. She went into a forest, following those footsteps. They were from a peculiar little fox. She walked carefully, trying not to make a sound. She was finally found out. In his fear, the fox hid beneath a tree. But his curiosity was larger than his fear and led him to take a look. A little girl was there, motionless, staring at him. He shyly turned his head, as if asking her a question. She just waved her hand in the air, in a friendly manner. He hesitated. You cannot trust everyone, you know. But she waved her hand again, inviting him to come closer. He was not sure, but in the end, he went to her. The curious squirrel watched from behind a tree, waving her tail, as if trying to say something. When out to the blue, a couple of mongooses came down and kidnapped her. In the meantime, the girl and the fox were getting along pretty well. She rubbed his back and he smiled at her. But suddenly, she grabbed his tail and took it away with an energetic movement. She 
stepped away, hopping for the forest. All alone, Dee had been waiting for her. On top of those rocks, at the edge of the cliff. She arrived, lifted him by the ears, and vigorously placed Fox's tail over his useless stuffed one. Now you're ready, the girl seemed to think to herself. She began to turn round and round with him, dancing at the rhythm of another strange melody she kept mumbling, like the ones children use in their dreams. Suddenly the girl stopped. Dee was as dead as before. He wouldn't fly or move. And this made her sad again. There was still something that wouldn't let him live. She almost lost all hopes for him. But she knew there must be something else she could do. Something that would most certainly bring him to life. They began a journey, and Dee started to dream. First, he saw a fish, half buried in a dry land surrounded by seaweeds, desperately trying to swim. Cactuses showed them the way, and the wolf head followed them. Then he saw a skull being taken away by the two twirling mongooses. Stones showed them the way, and the wolf head followed them. Then he saw a white bird fall from the sky, hit the ground and lose all his feathers, and his bones rose and danced surrounded by them. Branches showed them the way, and the wolf head followed them. Then he saw insects nailed to trees and how they turned round and round as if hypnotized forever. Purple leaves showed them the way and the wolf head followed them. Then he saw black, long time burnt trees catch fire as he looked at them. And a path of charcoal showed them the way to the top of the hill, and the wolf head followed them. And then it stopped to take a closer look at them. They followed the black road uphill. When they reached the top, they were able to see a smoky grey city in the distance, where the road ended. That was their final destination. There she was taking him to make her hopes for him come true.
नीते उशुत से उरुते उरुते दूबा आपते आपते खानुत का ते ते ते
habitantes del cielo llegaron arrastrados por un sueño de vida después de muertos compuestos de partes aún útiles de cuerpos descompuestos y miembros de tela de peluches viejos viven una eterna lucha contra el tiempo buscando miembros de otros seres para reciclar sus cuerpos sobre nubes de algodón Paja y rellenos construyeron un nuevo mundo añejo en equilibrio primitivo, amenazándose entre ellos. Crearon un lenguaje para comunicarse, aunque solo uno puede escribir y leerlo. Se organizaron según sus posibilidades y talentos, más arriba el más vivo, más abajo el más muerto. Viven así en su cotidiano contexto, gritando sus nombres a los cuatro vientos, muy por arriba de nosotros, nos miran con deseo, hambrientos de cuerpos nuevos, que funcionen por más tiempo y alarguen su eternidad, volando contra el viento. <risa> 